Welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from one of our special guests. I want you to say out loud this, please. Tonight is my night. night. Turn to somebody beside you or behind you and say, Tonight is also your night. You may be seated. God bless you. We're delighted you're here on a Sunday night middle of summer. We're expecting God to do some wonderful things. How many can say amen to that? Exodus 30, verses 22 to 33. I won't read it all. Moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Also take for yourself quality spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much sweet-smelling cinnamon, 250 shekels, 250 shekels of sweet-smelling cane, 500 shekels of cassia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a hen of olive oil. And you shall make from these a holy anointing oil, an ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. When I first got saved as a 15-year-old, I was in a church where the miraculous happened every Sunday night. We never got out of church before one or two o'clock in the morning. It was not unusual for the blind to see, the deaf to hear, growths to drop off people's bodies. People that were paralyzed got up and walked, and so it went on. That's the church that I grew up in. One night, one of the pastors called me and asked me if I'd like to go to a home group study that night with him and one of the other pastors. It was the lead pastor. And of course I said yes. I was just excited to be with them. We drove and went just out of the city we lived in and When we got there, we discovered that the home group had 175 people in it. That's bigger than some guys' churches. And Ray Bloomfield preached the gospel and a whole bunch of people got wonderfully saved. Then they announced they were going to pray for the sick. People indicated they were sick and they had a line of people to be prayed for. First man and the two pastors called me up. And they looked at me and they said, he's yours. Then I discovered he had previously been a concert pianist for several years. Hands had become crippled with arthritis and could no longer play the piano. They left. And I'm left with this guy, and I've never, ever prayed for the sick in my life. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to go about it. And so I thought, well, I'll just do what I've seen the pastors do. I don't know if it's right or not, but I'll do it. 
So I rebuked the spirit of arthritis, laid hands on him. I didn't know if it was a demon spirit or not, but I rebuked it anyway. <laughs> when in doubt, cast it out. <laughs> <laughs> And then I told him to go over to the piano and sit down and begin to play in the name of Jesus. Hands still crippled up. He looks at me and I looked at him. I was smart enough to know that if I didn't look him in the eye, nothing was gonna happen. He walks over to the piano looking at me, sits down, puts his hands like this and his fingers straightened out and he began to play the piano. That was the first miracle I ever prayed for. I thought I was made. Give me the rest of them. <laughs> the two pastors walked back in and said, all right, that's enough, sit down. And they took over. But it was enough to let me know that God is no respecter of people and that God can do the impossible through anybody. And God can make a way where there is no way. In the reading that we read tonight, It is a type picture of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And without going into details, please notice how God was very particular about how the anointing oil back there was made and ultimately the application of it. The word anointing in the Hebrew is the word mash, M-A-S-H. means to rub, to smear with oil, to cover over, to paint, to consecrate. In the Greek, it is the word krio, C-H-R-I-O. means to anoint, to cover, to rub with oil. Always used in a sacred or religious sense. Those people were covered, smeared with oil. Two words in the English come out of those Hebrew and Greek words. The word in the Old Testament, Messiah, which means the anointed one. And in the New Testament, Christos, in the Greek, which is the word Christ, and the derivative of that word is the word Christian. The term Christians was given by people in New Testament times that actually were mocking the disciples. They observed the followers of Jesus doing what Jesus did. acting like Jesus acted, performing the miraculous like Jesus performed them. So they called them Christians, which literally means little anointed ones. And if you are a Christian here tonight, you are one of God's little anointed ones because you have the power, the ability, the anointing to do what Jesus has done. In Matthew chapter 10, verses one to two, from what is called the Ben Campbell Johnson version, a little hard to find, but it's wonderful. Here's what he says. On one occasion, Jesus assembled his 12 understudies and affirmed to them their authority to make persons whole. Their authority prevailed over destructive forces 
that divided men and women within themselves as well as over diseases that made them sick. The word understudies is a theatrical term, a drama term, an acting term. It means somebody that is waiting, if you like, in the wings in case one of the main actors or actresses falls sick and they can actually step in and take the part and do the part. So it is with you and I. We step in today and we do what Jesus did. And believe it or not, the Bible shows us we have the same authority and power that Jesus had. And even though he is not here today physically, he is here by spirit in you and I. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. 1 John 2 verse 20 says, you have an anointing from the Holy One. In the Old Testament, that would be the oil. But of course today, the oil is not, we don't have the oil, we have the Holy Spirit himself. And the Holy Spirit fills us to overflowing. Whether you can feel him or not, sense him or not, if you are a believer this night, the Holy Spirit's anointing is living and abiding within you. The anointing is the manifested presence of God. It enables people to do things that they could not ordinarily do. In our reading, talking about the four spices in the anointing oil of the Old Testament, I want us to touch on it quickly to understand what goes on with the anointing. The first ingredient was pure myrrh. Myrrh is a narcotic used as a painkiller. It is used to deaden pain. At the birth of Jesus, wise men came and presented him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because Jesus came not only to carry our sins, but to bear our pain and carry our sorrows and deliver us from our hurts. He is our myrrh. In Mark 15, Jesus refused to take wine mingled with myrrh at his crucifixion. That's what they gave the prisoners that were going to be crucified to help deaden the pain. Jesus did not want to deaden the pain at crucifixion. He wanted to carry our pain. He became our substitute. So myrrh is the first ingredient of the anointing oil. I'm sure Pastor Jim has had this as other ministers or people that have been up ministering and there have been occasions when we've been as sick as the people we've been ministering to. When all of a sudden the anointing begins to flow. The pain leaves. Strength comes. What is it? It's the part of the anointing oil called myrrh. Oh, hallelujah. Number two, cinnamon oil comes from the cinnamon fruit, not cinnamon powder. Oil was flammable. It would burn. It was used to ignite fire. It speaks of the fire that comes with the Holy Spirit. 
John the Baptist said, there's one coming who is mightier than I, who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The fire of God is in the anointing. Not just for us to see pain removed, but to make us zealous for God. How many times have you heard the statement, oh, those people are on fire for God. There's something within them driving them. You remember the cowardly disciples hiding for fear of the Jews. Ultimately, they end up in the upper room and get filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, tongues of fire came upon them. And they went from being cowardly and afraid to being the most amazing disciples that changed the then known world on fire for God. They spoke with boldness. They were zealous. Luke 24, verse 32 the disciples on the road to Emmaus after Jesus' resurrection, meeting with Jesus, and he left them, and here's what they said. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us? Oh, I want the fire of God. Come on, hallelujah. Number three, Cain or Calamus usually a scented lily by the waterways of Palestine. When it would blossom, they would pick all the petals and then they would crush the petals, bruise them. And the fragrant oil would be extracted from it. The fragrance that came out of the bruising of those petals was used in the holy anointing oil. One of the requirements of anointing is this, that when we are bruised or hurt, we must become fragrant. Jesus set the supreme example. On the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they are doing. Anointing is to make us, supposed to make us sweeter. Some of us from time to time get bruised and bumped and offended and we lose our sweetness. Bruising hurts. Anointing brings out the fragrance in the midst of it. The fourth ingredient was cassia from the bark of the cassia tree. The word cassia means to split, to scrape off, to purge, excuse me, but it was also used as a laxative. <laughs> Cassia symbolizes the purifying effect of the anointing. The Holy Spirit convicts and reproves. He does not condemn. Sometimes we need to be purged as God takes out of us that which is not like him. And when that happens, sometimes people run, they hide. They don't like what's going on and they won't deal with their issues. As we respond to him, the anointing is increased. If we do not respond, the anointing is quenched. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19 in the message version says this, 
Don't suppress the Holy Spirit. The Ben Campbell Johnson version says, don't stifle the Spirit of God. Tonight, the anointing of God is here. Psalm 133 is a great picture and type of the anointing. Talks about the anointing oil that flowed down on the head and the, and the beard and the garments of, of, of the high priest. And the anointing is here to break the yoke. In Isaiah where it says the anointing shall break the yoke, the word break, that's not the best word. In the Hebrew, it means it shall entirely destroy the yoke. And tonight, as you release your faith in God and your belief in God, the anointing shall begin to flow from me and the pastors and leaders of this house and out of you and all the others so that your sickness and pain and disease can be healed. If you come in here tonight and you say, well, it won't happen to me, it probably won't because you get what you believe for. If you come in here tonight and say, man, I'm believing God. Whether it happens here or as I go or overnight or over the next few days, I'm not giving up. I'm believing God and I'm gonna keep believing God until it happens. The anointing oil has myrrh, the painkiller, has cinnamon oil, which produces fire, has cane, which produces fragrance, and of course the cassia, which purges. Tonight is your night. God is here. Come on, are you hearing me? God is here. God is here. God is here. The anointing that breaks the yoke is here. A couple in Perth, Western Australia. The man had to fly to Sydney, which is like going from LA to New York, because he needed a lung transplant, or two lung transplants. Only had seven, seven percent of oxygen in his lungs. The airlines had to come up with some special way in order for him to be able to breathe while they flew across the continent. They got to the hospital in Sydney. A couple of weeks they did examinations and tests and all kinds of things. On a Saturday afternoon, the surgeon called his wife in to his office in the hospital and informed her that they would not be able to operate on her husband. He was too weak. He probably wouldn't survive the next 48 hours. And if they operated, most certainly he would pass away. So she asked the surgeon if they knew of a minister she could call so they could get prayer. He gave her the name of a man, gave, him the gave her the phone number. She called, told him the situation. And that minister said, well, we'd be delighted to pray for you, but you have to understand that we in this church do not believe that Jesus heals the sick today. 
And here's the crazy thing. However, we do know a pastor who does believe. Your friend and mine, Mark. Call him. So they call Mark in Bondi, Sydney. They talk to Pastor Mark the most laid-back guy in the history of Christendom. <laughs> Nothing seems to faze him. He said, yes, we'll be glad to pray for him, but I got a better idea. Bring him to church tomorrow morning. We're starting a crusade with our fury, and he and I together will pray for him. She said, well, he's not doing well. And he said, and Mark, as only Mark would do, said, well, what do you got to lose? <laughs> Bring him. Now he tells me about it. They do all the first part of the service, which was wonderful. He gets me up to preach and I'm just starting into preaching when I see a couple come in the back of the, of the building. It's a woman pushing a guy in a wheelchair. He's got like clear plastic all around it. It looked like what was oxygen bottles to me. And they stay at the back. I preached the word of God. People got wonderfully saved. And then it came time to pray for the sick. So she wheels them to the front. So I reached my hands through the plastic, laid hands on them, commanded him to be healed and actually prayed this prayer. God, either heal him or give him two new lungs. We're not particularly fussy about which way. I mean, if he created us, he can do it. So she wheels him to the back of the building. And when they get to the back of the building... He says to her, I feel good. She goes, well, that's, that, that, that's good. No, he said, I feel really good. Well, that's good. Now, I feel good enough, I'm going for a walk. She says, you can't do that. Your lungs won't allow it. He says, lady, I feel good. I'm serious, this is what happened. She said, well, I'll come with you. He said, no, you stay here. So up he gets and out he goes. The meeting ends, I don't know, 20 minutes later, and he hasn't come back. 30 minutes after he's been gone, still hasn't come back. She's starting to panic. Comes down to talk to Pastor Mark. He said, well, let's just wait a while, see what happens. 45 minutes, an hour, nothing. Oh, she's freaking out. All of a sudden, he comes marching into the back of the building like nothing has happened. And she gives him what we call in Australia a spray. That's when the wife unloads on the husband. She said, I thought you could have died. You don't know what you put me through. And he goes, woman, here's the deal. The further I walked, the better I felt. And the better I felt, the further I walked. And the further I walked, the better I felt. And then I realized I was a long way from the building, so I got a taxi back. <laughs> and he's waiting outside to be paid. <laughs> Serious. They went back to the hospital that afternoon because she was living there while they were doing the tests. Got back into the room. Next day, the doctor came around just on a regular visit. He's sitting up. He's talking. The doctor says, are you okay? 
Yeah, yeah, man, I'm great. I want out of here. So the doctor, the surgeon, and some other doctors over the next several days did tests. They called him back into the office, him and his wife one day, and the doctor said, this is amazing. I've read the letter that the doctor wrote. And the letter said this, I do not believe in a higher power. However, I am forced to admit that a higher power has somehow intervened. He handed the letter to the man and his wife and the man goes, I told you Doc God was going to heal me. He said, he didn't heal you. He said, well, what do you mean? He said, I can't explain it, but you've got two brand new lungs. Come on, are you hearing me? He was going all over Western Australia telling the story that God is indeed a miracle worker and the anointing breaks the yoke. Tonight, whether your condition is severe or rather simple, if we can put it that way, God is your healer. Come on, hallelujah. And he went to the cross, and on the cross, he suffered, he died, and he carried our sins and our sicknesses, pains, and diseases. Come on, hallelujah. I just sense there's somebody saying, yeah, well, I know people have been prayed for and they didn't get healed. Me too. But that doesn't stop me praying for the sick. Come on, hallelujah. And believing God for them to get healed. Come on, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Let every head be bowed and every eye closed, please all over this auditorium with nobody walking around, looking or talking, unless you absolutely have to. The first thing I want to pray for tonight is the greatest miracle that can happen to a human being. That is the miracle of Jesus Christ coming into your heart and life and washing all of your sin away. So what are you talking about? Every person born into this world was born with an inherent nature of sin because of the fall of Adam and Eve. You, me, and everyone else. But God said, I don't want to leave you like that. I'll make a way of escape for you. And so his son Jesus went to the cross and on the cross he took the sin of all mankind upon himself. And he said if you make a choice, a decision to invite me into your heart and life, I will come in spiritually I will wash all of your sin away so at that moment you will be as if you've never ever sinned and I'll become your Savior and you'll become my son and daughter. At this point, people start making excuses not to do that and here's some of them. They say, well, what will my friends think about me? 
If you are governed by what your friends think about you, you're living in a tragic way. They say, well, I don't want to be religious. We don't want you to be religious either. Christianity, in spite of what some people have done with it, is not a religion. It's about relationship. You say, well, I've got my church. It's not about your church. It's about Jesus. Well, man, my family all go to church, so I'm cool. No. Nobody else can make this decision for you but you. Well, I'll go home and think about it. That's just a very nice way of saying no. Well, I think I'm a Christian. I hope I am. If you only think you are, if you only hope you are, you probably are not. For if you were, you would never say, I think I am, I hope I am. You would say, I know that I am. And there's no doubt about it. And tonight, I want to pray for men and women all over this auditorium, like we did in the three services this morning and yesterday morning. For Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to wash all of your sin away. This is your night. You were created for this night. And in order for me to pray for you, I'm going to ask you to respond. Very simply, I'm going to ask you to put up your hand, hold it up, let me see it. Then put it down. It doesn't matter if you're visiting for the first time or you've been here one or two or three times before or maybe become a regular attender. This is your night. So right now, all over this great auditorium, would you simply raise your hand, hold it up so I can see it. It'll take a little while. I'm going to count. Here we go. Over on my right, your left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Coming over here now, 15, 16, 17, 18. Down here, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and some more over here. God bless you and up there. Amen. Another hand going up. You may put your hands down. Up in, the, up in the windowed area. Yes, it's waving at me. Thank you. Is anybody else, you haven't raised your hand? Would you raise your hand right now? Just put it up real quick. Yes, 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 yes. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands down. Some more. God bless you. I want you to look at me, please. We're going to pray for these people to receive Jesus after we prayed for the sick. So we want to pray right now for people to be healed. How many of you here tonight, you are the sick, in pain, got some disease, some malfunction, whatever, would you raise your hands? Whoa, my goodness me. Wow. All right, we're going to do this a little differently. Whoa, wow. All of you that are sick, in pain, diseased, or some malfunction, something wrong, and you're believing God to be healed tonight, would you stand to your feet, please? Oh. Wow. My. Wow. Wow, Pastor, you ought to see this. It's amazing. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ 
and thou shalt be saved. And the word saved is the Greek word sozo, meaning you shall be delivered, spirit, soul, and body. The Bible declares that by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. The Bible declares that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. The Bible declares to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is God's word. Come on, hallelujah. Couple of things, number one. If you're saved tonight, you're full of faith. So we don't have to worry about trying to get you more faith. People come to me, I don't have much faith. Well, you got had enough to get the greatest miracle in the world getting saved. This happens. I have people say this to me. Well, you have to understand, Pastor Al, I believe this sickness is sent from God and it's the will of God for me. I don't want to be rude to you tonight, but garbage. It's not so. Come on, are you hearing me? Number three. Nothing is impossible with God. We sang it tonight. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Number four, I am not the healer, Jesus is. He will do it. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask every one of you standing as so many. What it's going to do is bring you to the front and we'll just have you stand around here and we pray for you. But that will never happen. You wouldn't get here. So we're going to ask you to take your right hand, if you wouldn't mind, if you can. Place it, if you can, on the part of your body that's afflicted. If you cannot, just put it on your heart or your head. And we're going to believe God. We're going to pray two prayers. The first one, I will pray a line at a time and ask you all to repeat it, every one of you, out loud after me. When we come to the end of the prayer and we say, Amen, then I will pray another prayer which you don't need to repeat. Then at the end of that, and this is up to you, but if I was in a developing nation, I'd be telling people, once you've been prayed for, start trying to do something that you previously could not do. If you couldn't move your neck, try to do it. Couldn't raise your arm, try to do it. This is your call. It's called a step of faith. We're going to believe God. And then we'll take a moment to lift our hands, and I'll instruct you when, to praise and thank God for our healing. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name, who forgives all iniquities, who heals all your diseases. The context is blessing and praising the Lord. All right. Are you ready? Let me ask that question again. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Tonight, Heavenly Father, I've come to you with a need in my body. And I am believing, I am expecting, 
for you to come to me and to heal me. I curse this sickness. I curse this disease. I curse this pain. I curse this malfunction. I drive it out of my body in the name of Jesus. And I am believing that as I lay hands on myself, faith is now being released and healing will flow into my body. I am ready to receive. I am open to receive. I know it's your will for me to receive. I thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. All right, keep your hand there. Father, I stand here as your servant tonight, representing you to these people and flowing in your anointing. I command every sickness, pain, and disease to be healed. I rebuke the powers of darkness in people's lives. Tonight, O oh God, heal them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Heal people's heads, their eyes, sight to come, their ears, their nose, their mouth, their teeth, their throat, their chest, their lungs kidneys and livers to be healed, their backs to be healed, every joint in their body to be healed, legs to be healed, knees to be healed, feet to be healed, arms to be healed, hands and fingers to be healed. I command growth to disappear in the name of Jesus. Go! I command diseases to leave. Cancer, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Sugar diabetes, I drive you out in the name of Jesus. Carpal tunnel, go! Jesus' name. Now, Father, just let your anointing to heal flow in all of these people right now. Right now. Just let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Stomachs to be healed. As it were, just breathe in your healing from Jesus now. Now, Father, we praise you and we thank you, regardless of what we feel or see, for what you are about to do. Now let's all lift our hands and shout our thanksgiving and praises to God for healing right now. That's it, shout it out. I just felt the Holy Spirit speak to me. I want you to do something that'll take you about three seconds. 
I'm going to ask every one of you that are sick to turn around, put your hand gently on somebody's shoulder and command them to be healed. For what you pray for, you get. Do it quickly. Don't get this great big prayer. Oh God, just be healed in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, don't sit down if you're sick. God's just doing something right now. He's doing something right now. Begin to try to do something you couldn't do if you feel that's okay. Now I want to ask you a question. I want to know how many of you can tell actually tonight that you just got healed or something has begun to happen. Like you can tell the healing has begun. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited. Just raise your hand if you're one of those two things. Hold, wow. All right. Now, now stay standing. We got, we got, where's the microphones, guys? Thank you. Just run to somebody. Here's a guy right here on your left. There. Yeah. What was, no, right there. He had his hand up. What was wrong? Uh, stomach issues, uh, digestive system. It's, 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 it's in work. It's in work. It's happening. Okay. All right. Come out. Uh, somebody else. I've been having sinus issues for the last three months, and I can feel silly saying this, but I can blow my nose for the first time in about three months. That's a miracle to her. Over here. Uh, I had a rotator cuff injury in my shoulder, and I couldn't lift my shoulder without feeling pain. And now I can rotate my arm completely around, and there's no pain. Oh, yeah. How long had you been like that? For about two months. Two months? Uh -huh. And now you can move it around? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No pain? Praise God. Praise God. Okay, back here. Hi, um, I've been dealing with some problems with um, emphysema um, and a heart disease, and I couldn't breathe maybe a half a lung full of air, and then I really couldn't even actually get the oxygen out of that half a lung full. And as of right now, I can breathe like I was when I was a young kid. I can take a, a great big breath. Thank you. Come on, hallelujah. Yeah, okay. Um, I have been experiencing the last year um, malnutrition in the Lord. Uh, I, nobody knows why my body is not being nourished, but when I had prayer tonight, I felt a warmth from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, and I know that the Lord Jesus Christ has touched me. Praise God. That's the fire of God. Yes, sir. Well, my, my daughter can't speak because she's too little, but I believe in God that God healed my daughter. I feel good. I love you, Jesus. Thank you. All right. Amen. I'm broken. I got you back there, way at the back. Asthma. I can breathe better now. Okay, what was wrong? Asthma. Asthma. And how long had you had asthma? For years. For years, you look very young. <laughs> and, and you can breathe a lot better tonight? Yes. Wow, that's awesome for her. Yeah, yeah. Up the back over here. I have stage four cancer, pancreas cancer, but I can feel it healing in my stomach right now. I believe God for that. We'll believe God for that. Over here again, up the back. As of May 16th of this year, I am now cancer free. And I thank 
one person that started me out with all this. Pastor Deborah laid hands on me when I first started the cancer. And as of now, like I say, I am cancer free. Thank you, Lord. So very much. Yeah. 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 My name is Patrick, and for the last eight months, um, I went through a knee surgery, and then now the pain shifted to my hip. And I was I was in service this morning, and I don't, it just about gave out when I was walking up here. So I'm I can move it a lot better, and there's no pain now. I mean, I've been I've wow. been in tremendous pain. For, oh, wonderful! Come walking down here. Walk with him. Come walking down here, sir. Stay with him. Walk with him. Walk with him. Yeah, lift it up. Lift it up. Lift your leg up. Come on, lift it up. All right. How does that feel? How does that feel? Feels good. All right, you want to run up the hill? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Uh, how's that feel? Good? Just give me a thumbs up. Now he's doing press ups and everything else. <laughs> All right, we're, we're, we're I way in the back. Oh, way over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I came to this service uh, believing for healing for my heart because my heart's been broken um, over the last three years. You know, I've been through a lot and, and I just feel the presence of God. I actually saw an image of Jesus taking out my heart, my broken heart, and giving me a brand new one. So. All right, all right. He comes to heal the brokenhearted. Yeah, down here. Last June, I didn't feel so good. And I went into the emergency and they said, your kidneys are gone. Your heart is failing. And six weeks later, they said, you have bone cancer. And I said, I can't. They can't be so I'm a healthy woman. And I didn't think I'd make it through the week. And it's been a year and a half now. And my blood tests are beautiful. And everything's beautiful. I just need the pain gone. Bless you. Thank Bless God. you. Thank you. Bless you. Let's get a couple more. Just two more. Where are you? There you are. Hi. I have uh, tendonitis in both my shoulders. And I just felt God's healing. Now that I normally raise my hands and it, it pains me, but I can lift it up and it doesn't hurt. Wow. How long had you been like that? For about six months. Wow, God bless you. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Well, about uh, four months ago, I had a torn retina, and my retina separated from my eye, and I had to have laser treatment so that it wouldn't separate anymore, and I've had Venetian blinds in my eye for the last four months. I can't, I can see, but it's like looking through closed, closed Venetian blinds, yeah. and black spots everywhere, and it's clear. Whoa. Praise God! I said two more. We got over here. Praise God. <laughs> Can you come up here? In 2011, I was here at church and couldn't get off off the toilet stool. Sorry, but that's the way it was. And eventually, I went to the doctor. And I was diagnosed with multiple tumors in both my kidneys. I went through chemo, two surgeries on both kidneys. God brought me through that and hooked me up with the top surgeon in the world. Went through <clears throat> that illness, second surgery was in 2011. And the church prayed for me and God was faithful July of 20. 2012, I was free of cancer. In July, no, hold on. In July, 
August. I started feeling something that felt funny. By September, I knew something was wrong. October, I was diagnosed with what they call multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer that is not curable, but manageable. So my husband and I prayed. The church was praying for me. And I had to go through chemo and uh, radiation. I didn't realize at the time when I first started, it was like 4,500 abnormal proteins in my skull and the big bones in my body. The, there was tumors all in my spine. And the doctor, my doctor told me that it was the harshest that he had seen any person go through as far as the chemo and radiation was concerned. But when a month later, it went from 4,500 to 20, those abnormal proteins. So we still kept praying. The doctors say now that I'm in remission, but I say no, I'm healed. Because the word All right. All right. Okay, Luke. Okay. In the 70s, I was in a car accident where I was crushed inside that car, and it broke a lot of my bones. But I've been walking because I believe in God, even though it hurt. But right now, after you prayed, I felt a warmth go through my body. And nothing is hurting right now. Everything is wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, hallelujah. You may be seated out there. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of great testimonies, and we've missed some. But we promise to get you out early. Let every head be bowed and every eye closed. All over this auditorium right now. Remember earlier, we had many people raise their hands to invite Jesus to come into their heart and into their life. And we want to pray for you for that to happen. It's not just enough to raise your hand. We want to pray for you for that to happen. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask every person that raised their hands to step out of their seats, push past the people, walk down the various aisles, Stand in a line across the front here so we can pray for you. You say, do I need to come? If it was worth raising your hand, it's worth coming down here. The Bible is very clear. If we confess Jesus publicly, He'll confess us before His heavenly Father. And we want you to understand we're not against you. We are for you. We believe in you. And most of us have made the same decision somewhere, sometime. If you need somebody to come with you, just grab somebody and say, come with me. If you brought somebody tonight, kindly and politely invite them to come and receive Jesus and come with them. If you didn't raise your hand, but the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart, then you come. Let's stand together, please. Now listen to me. All over this building, over here, up in the windowed area, here, in the middle, in the back, all over here, here, all over there, way over here, bunch of people over here, up in the windowed area. I'm gonna ask you right now, please, if you raise your hand early in the service, step out of your seats, Push past the people, walk down the aisles, stand in front of me right now. They're beginning to come already. Come on. Come. Come. Come on, every one of you that raised your hands, come right now. That's it. From over here. Worship His 
Here they come, God bless them. They're coming from the windowed area over here. Come all the way down here. That's it. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming over here. God bless you. Yeah, down here some more. God bless you. Praise God. Oh, that's awesome. Still coming. God bless you. God bless you. Give him a hand. God love you. Come on down. Wow. It's awesome, huh? Awesome. Fantastic. We're going to pray right now. And I'm going to pray a prayer out loud, a line at a time, asking Jesus to come into your heart and life and wash all of your sins away. I'm going to ask all of you standing at the front to repeat it each line out loud after me. The whole crowd's going to pray it with you. All right, here we go. And then we're going to ask you to go with one of our pastors just over here for a few moments. And they're going to show you what the next step is in God and so on like that. All right, let's pray. Here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight and I thank you for this opportunity to receive you into my life. I confess to you tonight that I am a sinner and I need you. I ask you to wash all of my sin away. I thank you now, Lord Jesus, that you are hearing and answering my prayer. You are now coming into my life you are now washing my sin away. I now belong to you. You belong to me. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, now listen to me. Listen, here's what's going to happen. We're gonna ask you to go with this pastor here. Raise your hand up high. And you're gonna just go over there. Do not go back to your seat. You're just gonna be there a few moments. So would you follow him just over there, through there, okay? Let's give him a big hand as they go.